What's good, peeps? Just waking up, man. I go by the name of Taff, and I'm one of the founders and creative directors at AMG. Let's go. So boom, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the pros and the cons of running a football team. And firstly, we're going to start off with the bad and end with the good. So here's the cons first. So cod number one, yeah, um, that's finding committed players. Before I get into that, I'm just going to give you a brief background on AMG. So AMG Ballers stands for All My Guys Are Ballers and we've been running for a bit over a year. So we launched in May 2019 um, and really and truly the, form, um, the, the team was built upon just a bunch of friends that just used to play football with each other on a regular basis, um, in goals, um, at goals, sorry. Um, and it's funnily enough, we, we had People's FC um, that just wanted to challenge us, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, based on them wanting to challenge us and us beating the life out of them, um, we decided to, to form a team from there. Um, and here we are today. So, obviously, commitment make, make, it plays a major part in, in everything in life, right? Now, as you may know, players are, you know, a fundamental part or instrumental part to running a football club. You know, they're the guys that, you know, um, you know, play the matches um, on the weekend. They're the guys that form the, the, they're part of forming the club, a major part of forming the club. And one thing I will say is that, you know, finding commit, committed players um, is definitely something that you have to cherish as a club. Um, because these are guys that, you know, you know, regardless of you know what the weather may be or regardless of what the circumstance may be you know these are guys that are there that will ride for the club and will always be their support to support the club regardless of anything um last season i can say um we had a lot of committed players man we had so many people or so many players registered um we had about i'll say 25 to 30 plus no 30 plus players registered um, and out of that, we had about 25 players that were fully committed, um, which is crazy because to get that amount of numbers, committed players, any anyway, like to get that amount of committed players, um, it's not an easy thing. Um, so to have that amount, I can't lie, there were challenges with that because when it came to stuff like you know training or match days, um, it was very sort of hard to form the squad because obviously on match days we're only allowed to take about 16 players. Um, so when you have 25 guys that are saying in and they're available to play on that Saturday, some people have to get dropped. Um, and sometimes, you know, that, you know, some players took offense, um, which, which we understand to, to an extent, um, cause everybody wants to play and nobody wants to feel like, you know, they're not worthy enough to actually play. But what we try to do is try to rotate things as much as possible, but not everyone understood that. Uh, which is cool. Um, so we had to move regardless and, and, you know, just really sort of know how to deal with the amount of committed players that we had. Now, the difference between last season and this season is that we have not as much committed players. Um, and, be, you, know, you know, due to not having as much committed players, um, we've had a lot of players that um, we've had to part ways with. So we've gone from 30 plus players registered to about 15. So that's half. Okay, so the chronicles of owning a football team. One minute, you go from having a full squad coming to training. Next minute, you get this. Today we got about nine men. Well, it's all good. Won't stop. Uh, which is mad, you know, and for a lot of clubs, it's like, that is, that's like, wow, like, <laughs> how manage, you know? Um, and the reason why committed players are very important is because, you know, without having committed players, you know, this is how, you know, a lot of clubs fold. You know, you hear of a lot of clubs folding um, and, and mainly, and the reason why they mainly fold is because um, of, you know, lack of committed players. So they have to make the decision to do so. Um, but, you know, thankfully enough, we haven't had to do that 
um, you know, we can still run with 15 and we're still adding as we go along. Um, but the 15 that we definitely have now are, you know, a bunch of solid lads, man. And it was great to see how they performed over the weekend. Not game. <laughs> Let's see who the boys are the up for today's game. He's about to get peak. Okay, so we've got some of the lads here already. Skipper, always on time. Got a few men. Say about six at the moment. But it's game on. It's game on. Win or lose. We've got this either way. Trust me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, exactly. So imagine. We've got a game today. Pre-season game to get. Against Greenwich. In the same league as us. And we've only got eleven players. <laughs> 11 players, no subs. You know what? That don't matter to us. We're champions, we're fearless. Don't fear nothing. We put everything on the line, regardless of how many men. So trust me. Um, we played against a club that is actually part of our league and they had their full team. Yeah, these are teams that have been running for years and they've had their, they had their full team. Um, and they only beat us 3-2. And it's crazy because for me, I'm a winner. I love winning. But one thing I can say is that I was extremely proud of our performance, man. Uh, we were, we're basically a new team. And with this new team, we haven't even had the chance to train properly yet. So the chemistry wasn't there and you could tell from that match on Saturday. But, you know, we fought and we knew, you know, how much we wanted it. Um, and hence the reason why we managed to get the result. You know, they were gifted with, with uh, you know, a few goals, but, you know, no excuses, we move, but yeah, committed players, man. Very, very hard um, to find, but when you do find them, um, it's, yeah, it's proper. Number two, communication. Oh, man. Woo! This feels a lot like hell. When it comes to communication, man, like, Man, oh man, we, we've gone through so many situations where because of the lack of communication from the boys, um, it's put us in some crazy positions. So we've had situations where, you know, maybe they, 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 the situations like on match day where, you know, we've had our full team there and then all of a sudden, because of the lack of communication of certain players not being able to make it to the, to the game and telling us about an hour before the game, um, or even certain situations where certain players are telling us 20 minutes before the game. Why? 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 Um, that has put us in a very bad position because obviously to feel that um, it is hard. And then obviously when you're trying to get another player that didn't make the squad for the weekend, him um, an hour before, you know, you get guys that are like, nah. And you know, more. It, to be fair, it's got more to do with ego. Um, and I get it, but um, I don't get it at the same time because at the end of the day, you know, um, as, as a team, you know, everybody should be riding for each other, um, regardless of anything. And what I mean by that is, even if you're somebody that doesn't get picked this week, um, I don't think it's something to take offence by, especially when it's, you know, you know we base things on a rotation base, um, basis. Um, so, yeah, but obviously you're always going to get players that will get it and won't. Um, so, you know, when the players don't communicate with us effectively, um, it puts us in a bad position and that goes to um, for training as well you know when it comes to turning up or guys saying that they're in for training and then they don't turn up at all um, and we have a policy where if you don't come to training yeah you don't play because it's not fair for those that are coming week in week out to training and then all of a sudden you know um, they don't get to play on, on, on the weekend you know so we try and be as fair as possible um, even though we, we want the results um, we, we have to do things according to who's committed and who's not because they're the ones that, that, that champion the mission more than anyone else. So communication, yeah, major, major. Third, money. You see when it comes to money, yeah, and it comes to people parting with their money, my God, that's like one of the hardest things ever, you know. Um, you know, conversations on money is like a very difficult in itself already. Um, so when you're, you know, going to, when we're going to the players and we're telling them that, you know, they need to pay for whether it's um, registration fees, um, 
um, match day, uh, training, and all these different things, sometimes there's question marks. You know, people ask questions, and it's fair to ask questions, but when you do ask questions and we give you the answers um, that are, are very um, clear, it's important to understand this. Um, so, what people, what, what, what a lot of these um, uh, the, the players don't understand is that to run a club, you know, we also need money to run it too. Um, hence the reason why we, we get sponsorships, um, you know, is to, to keep up with the day-to-day -day runnings of the club. You know, when we lose out on, um, on balls, we have to find ways to replace them. Um, when we, um, you know, when, I don't know, when training um, equipment is damaged, we also have to replace them as well. And just many other things, like, especially because we're trying to be a very content-driven um, club, you know, I can't lie, at one point we were like, even because we're, I'm just going to be real with you guys as much as possible. At one point, to get content done, we were paying £250 per video. Now, being a creative myself, I wanted to focus on quality. Now, obviously, if you want quality, you've got to pay for quality, right? Now, obviously, that paying that £250, it just, it didn't make sense. It just wasn't. It just wasn't conducive in the end. Um, so we had to work smarter and find easier ways to do this. Um, so this is where we now decided to um, get cameras involved. At first, I actually got university students to be on board, but then after a while, they started asking for payments. <laughs> so, and which is fair because especially when you're coming to record a match, it gets, it, it can be tedious at times when you're standing there, especially when the weather's bad, um, you know, you know, these guys, they don't want to just do that for free, especially on a weekend when you can be doing many other things. So it's definitely understandable and that hence the reason why we want to pay. So that's why money goes towards these things as well. Um, and more times, you know, obviously because we're a new club, we find ourselves, you know, being a minus than, 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 than in profit more times. And um, sometimes because it's so unbearable, we, we have to dip our hands into our own pockets and make things work just to, to, for ends to meet. Sponsorship as well. Um, sponsorship is quite difficult to find, um, especially you know when you're a new club. Um, it's very difficult to find you know companies that believe in your project. Um, you know, even based on our experience last season, um, it, you know we found ourselves you know getting sponsorship closer towards the start of the season. Uh, which can be very detrimental because there's things that need to get done and you know need to get paid for um, before the season starts so that you're well prepared um, for everything you know and these are things that you know these these are funds that go towards um, um, you know uh, kits um, equipment etc etc um, and just to, to keep up with the day-to-day -day running of the club too um, yeah and, and, and one thing we realize is that it's not always one sponsor that's enough. You know, um, we you know we, we found ourselves having to have more than one. We we had three last season, um, so that we can meet up with the amount that we needed to cover um, all the things that we needed to cover. And it wasn't much. It wasn't actually much. But um, yeah, sponsorship is obviously there to help you fund these things. But it's not always easy to find that. This is just part of running a club, and you know we don't blame anybody else because no one told us to start a club in <laughs> to begin with. But. Um, Obviously, this is part of the hard parts of running the club, money. Um, um, so yeah, that's, I'll say, the third, the third issue. Lastly, I'm, I'm gonna name this one hearsay. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at um, now, you know, when you're dealing with, um, and what I mean by hearsay is, you get players or people saying one thing or the other about the club. Um, um, you know, whether it's... Because like, one thing I realise is when you're dealing with people that have... Um, or you're dealing with a bunch of people that have different personalities, come from different walks of life, you know, people process things differently. Um, and because of that, because people process things differently, people form their own opinions and, you know, form their own, um, you know, thoughts and, and, and uh, whatever it may be about the club. Um, and more time from the ones that we've heard, um, none of them are true. Um, and all it takes is for people to even come to us and have these conversations rather than speaking um, behind us, which doesn't help because at the end of the day, if we call ourselves a family-oriented club, um, 
you know, it's important that, you know, everything that's been said is is, 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 is said to the right people. So, you know, there's, there's not always things that we're going to pick up on. So there's, there's times where, you know, we need the players to really try and show us, um, you know, where they think things have gone wrong and where they think things should change. Um, and more times you don't get that. And this is where all the hearsay and the back chatting and, um, you know, uh, all of that stuff comes into play. And then more time that kind of leads to even players wanting to leave. Um, and then when they do find out the truth, um, it's like, yeah, you know. Um, but hearsay, knowing how to manage that as a club is very important. Very, 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 very important because you're always going to get people that are going to say different things. So it's either you want to try and deal with them or you ignore it and move on, you know. Um, so hearsay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's the point.